Hello everyone and welcome to Cosmeteer. This is another spaceship building game and again this game is in an early stage of development. Though before we actually get into the game I will go on record as saying this is probably one of the most well developed early stage of development games that I've played in a very very long time. And much like uh, Shortest Trip to Earth this game is currently available for free for uh, from the website. I will of course have a link down in the description below. But this game focuses a lot more on this on the simulation of a starship and ultimately a fleet because you can have more than one starship. Um, if I was to compare this game to anything else I'd probably say it's a bit of a mix between reassembly and gratuitous space battles. It has got the kind of close in seeing your crew running around doing things kind of Thing of gratuitous space battles and, and the, the fights are actually quite nice and it's also got the, the fleet building kind of strategic elements of reassembly but it is always easier to show than to describe so we're going to just jump into a new game. You can play on creative where you've got infinite money but it is not necessarily safe, it's still dangerous, but you can just build gigantic ships. But in this one we're going to be playing on Bounty Hunter, so we're going to need to destroy ships to make money to increase our ship and uh, improve it. So here we go, this is the ship, you can either look on the outside, you can model this quite a lot, all of this you can colour, there's also even mods in this game, and from what I'm aware of, I believe this game is actually developed either by a very small development company, or by one person, which is always very impressive whenever it, it happens, but the fact that this has got modding support, the engine itself has been built from the ground up for this game, so it is very, very uh, well positioned to support what the game wants to do. Now you can watch inside the ship and it does matter where all these corridors and doors are for things like fire spreading around and the likes and also your crew being able to get back and forth. We've got a couple of things on screen, we've got a couple of weapon systems, some thrusters, it really matters where the thrusters are because there is a, a 2D um, simulation of physics here, it's not three dimensional, it's only two dimensional but the thrust and all that sort of stuff is model so you do need like reverse thrusters to slow down and uh, thrusters uh, a little ways away from your centre of mass to so enable turning and that sort of thing. Got a reactor which is producing power or most of the things on the ship, in fact everything on the ship right now just uses power. All of our thrusters just use power. There isn't some sort of um, fuel component. So they'll take fuel rods or power cells from the reactor, put it into the thrusters, likewise with the weapon system. Some things require crew, some things don't. Now, over here we've got some enemies and we are going to need to kill a few of them, but we've got 25k, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of building. I did mention that there, there are a couple of mods out already and some of them actually look pretty cool I may well showcase some of those uh, we're not gonna need doors between them because these doors are more than enough but looking down here the red bar is the minimum crew you need the green bar is the recommended amount and this is the same for energy we're fine for energy right now but not so good on crew so what I would like to do is move the reactor just a tad in fact um, ba -bum, ba -ba -ba -bum. We're going to move this. This is a uh, little uh, fire extinguisher. We're also going to place in a piece of armor there. Uh, replace. Uh, sure, we'll pop that armor there, that armor there. That should look okay. There we go. Because what I would like to do is move this up. You can uh, control Z or... Uh, whatever you might want to do, uh, you can rebind pretty much every key in the game because this was built for PC from the ground up. The, the devs really seem to understand that they, they take advantage of the fact that this was built for PC. So rebinding of keys is a given. So we're going to move that up there. So we've got our reactors just a little bit further up. Over here, we've already used 6,000 and that's just for the, the new gun and a couple of armor plates. But I would actually like a storage for my power. So let's drop two grand on a um, energy storage. So they will take the, re the power cells from the reactor, which produces them over a certain period of time, and they'll store them up here so that we've got a little backup, mostly for our guns, which is wh why I put the storage right there. Now, I would like... Mm -hmm, let's see. I could have this bed 
elsewhere, but I think we should actually be okay. I'm going to place down a little bit more armor there, but I'm going to expand our crew quite a lot. So I'm going to first move the, the crew quarters over there. You'll notice that I got a little bit of... I, I didn't spend too much money moving things around. Got a little bit of money back because I automatically sold the uh, crew quarters that we previously had. But you will get better prices on things as you place them down. Um, because you'll be getting rid of things and stuff like that. So, let's see. Yeah, sure, we could place this about there. Bump. There we go. Um, let's see. Now, the reason why that costs so much is because we hired a full complement of crew when we placed it. Uh, but I'm thinking we want to replace some of this. So, yeah, let's get rid of that. Pop these down like so. Bump, bump. There we are. Now, uh, those cost the same amount. Although this looks like a much larger um, piece, it costs the same amount as just a square piece. So there we go. We've got a little bit of armor where we want it. In fact, I'm going to place some more fittings down here as well. And a little bit here and there. There we go. So there we are. So we've got a, a nice full cr uh, crew complement. This should all work quite well. And it's going to cost us 14,000 to do. There we go. Now people are going to start moving out. Now that we've got uh, this storage area over here, our crew are going to be very busy moving the power cells from the reactor up there for a little while. But we don't really need to wait on that. Let's go and pick ourselves a fight. Now, as with any kind of strategy game, there's a lot of controls here. I can tell this ship that I want it to follow a couple of waypoints much like many real-time strategy games. Now, obviously, if you do that, then the ship is going to try and uh, achieve what you've asked it to do in the best possible way and won't use its thrusters efficiently. But if I were to say, yeah, I want you down here, it's going to spin where it is before heading over there. It'll it'll work out. The, the AI is actually reasonably good at working out the best way to achieve what you've told it. So, so don't try to micromanage too much. Uh, I think macromanaging your ship is much more efficient in this. Now, this little uh, ring here, everything outside is the fog of war. If I pause it for a moment, I know nothing about this contact yet. Currently, I'm going to try and engage it from this direction. Uh, if I zoom in, I can see a lot more detail on my ship. But if we allow the scanner to just go over the top, I suddenly have a lot more information, as well as how much this is uh, worth. Now, ultimately, if you take out the reactor, you will usually take out the whole ship. So, especially on the smaller ships. On the bigger ships, where they've got multiple reactors, it can be a little bit more of a problem. But we should be okay. At this point, we can just tell it to attack individual components and it'll do its best. Or we can just tell it to attack the blip, in which case it'll just do what it can. If a component gets destroyed that you were targeting, then it will uh, go ahead and continue just uh, picking its own targets. You can have between four times speed and one quarter speed. I usually like it at one half when uh, we're having a bit of a fight. Now then, let's uh, focus on you. We can watch our ship come into firing range and start engaging. Taking out their weapon systems first if we can. They were missing quite badly there. There we go, and now this one. And once you're done with that, go for the reactor because that's uh, game over for this ship. But how much damage have we taken? Let's uh, focus on our ship. Not too much. Little bit of damage there. We can see a, a little bit of damage to the... Uh, outside of the weapon system, but uh, overall we were able to take out that enemy fairly quickly. Now once we uh, are out of combat for a little bit, we will get the repair option. In this case, because nothing was actually broken, just a couple of things were, were damaged a little bit, doesn't cost us much to repair. Very much worth putting plenty of armor over things, because it absorbs a lot of damage per square um, compared to other uh, components. Uh, let's go ahead and place this here. I don't want to, I could place it up like that, but that's going to limit this gun's ability to rotate because right now those are like turreted to a degree. Um, but at the same time, yeah, we'll protect the outer ones just that little bit more because most of the firepower is going to be hitting us around here. Now, should I go for something like this or should I just go for a block? Mm, I think we'll go for a block. That looks fine to me. Okay, now then. Right now, we can spin 
on more or less on our center of mass thanks to the thruster placement i could put some extra thrusters pointing downwards um but that isn't necessarily the the best way to turn the ship honestly having um thrusters pointing to the sides a little bit above a little bit behind your center of mass is probably the best way to do it all these things do actually matter uh right there are lots of different things that we can add and the dev is frequently adding new components as well which is pretty impressive some of them are massive missiles were very recently added as were the electro bolts which are kind of like um energy destabilizing weapons more than anything else but they are very expensive and they use a lot of power to do what they do in fact we could probably afford to do it but it's gonna really mess with our crew complement and our um energy requirements like the optimals have gone quite low i think we'll stick with these for now so let's go and uh, finish off a couple of the enemies here and then we will have a look at moving to a new system and that is going to require a fairly extensive rebuild of the craft because we will need a faster than light engine and that is not going to be cheap it's not cheap to build and it is very not cheap to run let's get in there there we go and slow down just a little bit there we are, and let's have a look at what we've got here then. The Mosquito. Uh, you've got one weapon system, but you do have a point defense system. I wouldn't mind making a laser craft, honestly. On the larger ships, which are significantly bigger, you will actually get to a point where you might want to attack in a very specific way. For example, I'm attacking the Mosquito straight on. But I, once I've done that, I'm going to want to attack the... Uh, oops. I'm going to want to attack this from the side, probably. That little uh, red ring there is letting me know where my guns can fire from, which is actually quite useful. And perhaps I should attack it from behind, somewhere around there, where I'm not going to be uh, subject to its ca main cannon. So there we are, we're just taking that out. And once we've done that, the ship will try and move around to the better position behind the ship for uh, attacking but as you can see when you're running at normal speed it is very hard to uh, control where everything is it's very hard to see where things are going but we're slowly cutting through the ship as we try to uh, hit the reactor whilst also trying to get to the position where i've told them to uh, move to but honestly we are probably gonna wipe out so much of the ship whilst trying to move in there we may even finish it off before we get there so it was uh, it was a moot point in this instance because it was such a small ship to begin with but soon we will be fighting large ships and with large ships it actually starts becoming important to try Try and attack from uh, oh wow that was able to turn very well um, to attack from certain directions because you'll shield yourself behind the sh uh, a shadow of their turret so their main guns might not be able to see you there are also spinal mounted guns or at least fixed turret guns so uh, they only shoot in a set direction in those cases you want to be attacking from somewhere outside of their line of fire but at this point we really should just be able to uh, annihilate the uh, reactor at this point we should be able to do that fairly quickly because we haven't taken damage in quite some time we can just go ahead and repair and that's fine as you see this is empty of reactor um sorry energy cells we're currently using up most of them just keeping our engines going and just loading the uh, guns manually so we've not got much of a buffer we certainly do benefit when uh, we have a little bit of time between engagements because it gives us a bit of time to fill that up so our cannons can just fire non-stop for a little while. We can take out these uh, thrusters and honestly there's very little of the ship left. There's corridors, actually I think those are two berths in fact, and a reactor. There, there was nothing here but we have to destroy the reactor to destroy the ship and then get the bounty. So there we go. We've got a, a nice sizable bounty. We've got one more enemy. We're going to do this one in a bit of a faster speed though. Let's uh, get down there and hopefully along the way. In fact, once uh, once something you've selected is outside your camera, you can just click up here and zoom straight through it. That's so convenient. I've got to, I've got to hand it to the dead. They, they've done a really, really good job of just thinking of all the things that uh, would make the game easier to play right from the beginning. And as I said, this is free at the moment. The uh, developer has decided that he's more interested in getting feedback for the game right now than making a little bit of money. 
Um, he understands that realistically, he would only make a small amount of of money on the game at. Uh, at the moment and it's more important for him to get player feedback and actually build the game up so for the time being it's free but there is an intention to eventually sell it obviously and perhaps on steam he has mentioned that so uh, do do uh, pick this up soon if you are interested in the look of it and want to help out with feedback and uh, Posting on forums, he's a very active developer and uh, is is very uh, very engaged with the community, which is all, always always nice to see. We're just going to middle mouse click on if I can the mosquito here to uh, lock on it. There we go. You can take out the uh, bridge, the control room, which will greatly hamper any uh, coordination between the thrusters and the weapon systems. If you can do that, you can you can hobble a ship quite well, and you don't need to be as as thorough in wiping out all the guns, for example. But with that done, we really want to fly to other parts of the of the galaxy. And as you can see, there are many, many solar systems around here. And each one has multiple planets and multiple moons with different types of fights. For example, this one over here would have a very, uh, very easy fight for us. It's an amateur, four amateur um, enemies over here. There would be four professional enemies. For veteran enemies, eventually you can find a couple of places which are just crazy. Uh, this one, Elite, and it goes up to Vanguard. It may even go higher than that. Uh, let's see if there are ones with three and three. I don't see any yet, but it doesn't mean that they're not there. The difficulty curve is extreme. They're not so much from the one slash to two slashes. Um, from the amateur to professional, but certainly going to um, the veteran and absolutely to the vanguard and elite. Those those are enormous vessels you can possibly hope to defeat. But before we can actually jump around, we've got a little bit of uh, um, jump fuel at the moment. We actually need a faster than light engine. So it's back to the drawing board for us, literally in this case. Um, you know what? Let's improve a couple of things. We've we've got to reserve some room for building. Now, currently, I'm in blueprint mode. Now, blueprint mode is spe is special. We can go in here and not be in blueprint mode. Um, discard modifications, where we can now just put things down in real time. But I couldn't place this over here. I can't place it. If I go into blueprint mode, I could. Because none of the changes have, have taken place yet, the game is paused, and when I commit by clicking make it so, then all of my changes are placed in. Um, and at that point, it will check for for them being legal um, placements. So we'll get rid of that. Uh, we will be getting rid of these. I am strongly considering putting one big engine at the back, a large thruster. Double-sized propulsion engine capable of pushing the ship with more than twice the force of the standard thruster. Uh, I think we will, in fact, have one of those. Uh, the standard thruster uh, pushing the ship with a modest amount of force, and then the small thruster uh, useful mainly for maneuvering. So, since these are my main thrusters, I would actually like them to be quite capable thrusters. Furthermore, uh, we're doing okay for people so far. I'm going to say we'll pop the faster than light drive right there. We're still okay for power on this relatively small ship, but we do need a little bit more people would be ideal. We could fit in a little, little berth, a little bunk there, and it would just enough bring us up. But... I think I would actually rather do something else. Let's go ahead and move things around. You can just move things if you want to, which is a, a nice uh, option as well. Let's do this, and at that point, we can go ahead and place another crew berth just down here. That's going to give us more than enough people for a while. Uh, we will have a little bit of armor there. But I would also like very much if we could get a little engine. Now, that may or may not work. Yes, it does work. Fantastic. It'll give us a little bit more maneuvering capability there. And then we'll uh, finish it off with a little bit of armor on the outsides. Uh, I think, uh, well, we won't be able to place the armor all the way down on the other side. So we'll just do something like this, I think, for now. Uh, is that nice looking? I think it's nice looking. So we've got our engines on those sides. 
but I'm not happy with the door placement. I would like to uh, remove some of these doors. I'd, I I would prefer my crew to walk around there and uh, reach the various areas. In fact, we can go ahead and place that there instead. And although this cost 600, we got it for only 200 because we were replacing one corridor and one piece of armor there. So uh, that's actually a lot better. It's not the best in a way because it's kind of asymmetrical and that will rot my mind eventually. But for now, I think I can resist. Uh, let's go ahead and just adjust the armor placement a little bit more because I think we could... Uh, actually set that up a little bit better there we go that looks much much better now there are a couple of other things we can do as well if we go to uh corridors you can just place corridors where you want but there are a couple of other things let me just see where we can find it a moving walkway this will allow crew to move very quickly from one place to the next and perhaps now that the the, the ship is getting long i might want my crew to be able to make the journey a little bit faster so how about but we move a few things around. Mm, that's going to be a little bit tricksy with you, though, isn't it? Hmm. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do this the way I would want. Um, no, that's in a bit of a rough place for me. Uh, let's see. If I were to position that there, move these up like so. The problem with the... Um, the crew, the control room is you can only have doors in one half of it, which is a bit of a pain. However, I think we can make this work. So we've got, we'll have to have a doorway through the reactor room and a doorway through this berth. That's fine. Doorways out of the berth as well would be ideal. Uh, this berth can move in there. I don't actually want a door between the berth and the reactor room. Don't particularly need it. What I will place down is a little bit of, well, actually there's no point in having armor in the middle, thinking about it, because by the time, if something's shooting at something in here, I've already failed my job. <laughs> we're, we're already in a very bad place, so let's not worry about that too much. Instead, we'll have some corridors around here. That actually makes this look much better, and we don't need a door there. So straight from the reactor to the storage area, that's cool. And we can, in fact, if we really would like to, we could just have a structure there. Uh, and we'll get 25 back from that. Um, just because we don't actually have anything to place there. Um, so we can leave it empty. Now, what I'm going to do over here is a little bit different, though. We are going to have the moving walkways. Now, they are expensive, and they are one way. So... We're going to have that there and this down there. So the crew can move from left to right fairly quickly. The AI is, is pretty good about working out where they should really be stood when it comes to this. If they're trying to walk against it, they'll move at one quarter speed. If they're trying to walk with it, they'll move at double speed. And the AI pathfinding will do its best to make, make the most of that ability. Uh, so there we go. Uh, we'll be able to move things around a little bit faster as a result of that. So that's going to cost us 40,000 to do, plus hiring six extra crew, which is going to put us well over the amount of crew that we need. I'm just going to give them a little bit of time to go ahead and uh, load everything up and get everything turned back on. There we are. Fantastic, I must say. There we go. My crew moving a lot faster when they've got somewhere else to go to now. A little bit slower moving across them, though, which isn't, isn't grand. Perhaps I'll actually change that just slightly by doing something like this. Maybe I could just add these in. So there's plenty of breaks, but they still actually uh, get the advantage of moving quickly between one point and the next. In fact, if I do that, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this door here. There we go. That looks amazing. All right. So with that done, let's go ahead and uh, turn Nah, I'm not so keen on this, I've got to be honest. That, that little gantry there, I think we will actually replace it with armor. Um, or even a corridor, just for the sake of having it not look terrible. Um, so, making that so. And now we're going to paint our ship a little bit as well. The, the actual ability to paint on this is, is really, really good. 
First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the um, decals that are already there. You've got a couple of layers. You've got the low layer, so you can place a couple of things down underneath the high layer, and you've also got the overall paintwork. Let's go for something a little bit more warshipy, shall we? Um, we could perhaps go for a nice, nice dark red, maybe a bloody red, or that can be used more for highlights. Actually, yeah, let's go for a really dark red. Sort of like a burgundy colour around there. Now, on the low decals, let's go ahead and have a nice bold red, a nice uh, strong colour. And we'll go straight up, all the way. Uh, I would Currently, we've got mirror mode on. Uh, I'd also like to kind of diffuse it a little bit so it's not quite as, as harsh. Um, maybe something like this, there, and then we'll actually draw out a harder line, an edge along there, and then we'll continue that along there. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna soften it on the back. In fact, I may even take away the the softening that I did there. We'll have hard lines at the back. Um, perhaps we could have. Something like this instead. Yeah, I kind of like that, actually. Uh, right, we could have a uh, decal on the, the highest point. And sure, let's uh, let's find something. Uh, you know, a yin-yang might be cool. Let's go for that in a bit of a darker color. Maybe a blue. Something about there. Hmm. I'm not sure. That doesn't really stand out there. Are we a bit of a pirate? No, we're bounty hunters. We're, we're not pirates. Uh, oops, that was completely in the wrong place. Um, sure, that seems okay. We can just change. Ooh, actually having a yellow seems a little bit better. Yeah, something like that. Yes, I like that. We're, we're going to be going with this one. A little bit cliche, I suppose, but uh, that'll do for now. We are not going to be staring at this most of the time. But it, that's just to give you an idea of the customization options. So we've got 45 jump fuel right now. That should be enough to get us there. Yes, it's only going to take us 18. But do be aware that you need to plan for this. Because if you get stranded somewhere and you don't have enough jump fuel, and you don't have enough money to buy jump fuel because you can buy it, then that's it. You're, you're out of luck. You, <laughs> you're going to have to start again. So they're currently bringing down a load of power cells to the uh, FTL drive, and once it's fully charged, we can jump. You can have more than one ship in this game. You can have a genuine fleet. Be aware that if only one or some of the ships in your fleet have FTL drives and you try to jump out of the system that you're in, you leave the other ships behind. You don't leave them behind where you can control them. No, they're just gone. And that can represent an awful lot of money. Learn learn from my previous mistakes. Don't ever do that. There we are. We've actually got a nice, uh, nice ability to turn now thanks to the extra thrusters on the sides. Yeah, they work out very, very well. Okay, let's go and see who we are going to be fighting. Now, these should be, I believe, slightly stronger opponents. So we may even need to upgrade our ship. Right, let's uh, pause this and have a look down here. What have we got? Oh, actually, it's not too bad. Maybe we're fighting against very similar opponents to the, the last few. Uh, I won't slow time down as much for this one. We've already seen what's going to happen. We'll just take out that weapon system. And now you can just work on uh, taking out their reactor if you would be so kind. There we go. Almost there. Oh, damn it, it's spinning. So which means we're having to do a lot more work. But we took out their uh, their control room, so their thrusters are not coordinated at all anymore. Uh, let's go ahead and take this one on. I like this little ship. It's a, it's a good little starter ship so far. Uh, it could do with a little bit more power, I suppose. but uh, Firepower, that is. But mm, it's going to be difficult to find a place to put that extra firepower. So I'm a little bit uh, hesitant to just put that in there just yet. But uh, there's a couple of places that we might be able to fit something in. Uh, maybe just another two guns would be enough. There are shield systems, and I'm very eager to get those because they, although they are extremely power hungry, they are also extremely useful, as you can imagine. Ooh. I like the uh, look of this one. Now, this one's using a cannon. Cannons are very different. And although currently I'm only using energy weapons, 
Cannons require ammunition, and, and I'll quickly show that to you. Uh, we can enter build mode very briefly. Um, cannons and missiles require different types of ammunition. So you'd need a building to produce the ammunition, possibly ammo storage as well. I would recommend it because the building that makes it does it slowly. Uh, likewise with missiles, but much, much bigger. And they saw far fewer missiles. It's a very, very interesting system, and I quite like it. We'll uh, probably be getting to uh, having a few missile ships. I would rather not mix my weapons on a single ship, though, because that just seems to be inefficient, really. Uh, there we go. We've destroyed the main weapon system, so you can now start working on the reactor instead. Oh, it looks like they're going to try and scarper. I think not, actually. Take out both of its uh, thrusters if you can. But um, having missiles or cannons on a ship that already uses lasers it can just it, it can be very inefficient in the way that you uh, build up uh, and try to store things because you need so much room just to produce the ammo and then store it. it it seems better if your entire ship is dedicated towards it plus you have the concerns of lots of different types of um, maximum and optimal engagement ranges lasers are much cl more closer range cannons uh, kind of middle range missiles very long range so I would prefer to build a ship for missiles specifically, a much larger ship which can afford the room and the crew that would be necessary to be able to load the missiles in, in a reasonable time frame. Right, let's have a look at you. Found fighter. Uh, you got two lasers and go for the actually we can we can just go straight through the middle. Let's try and saw them in half. And you can do that. Though, unlike many games, just sure sawing a ship in half does not necessarily kill it. The parts that break off, if they are capable of supporting whatever they were, will continue fighting. Um, so, for example, if they got a reactor there, or maybe uh, an energy storage and a laser, uh, the crew that are there will just keep going. It, it, perhaps there's bulkheads that are automatically sealed to make sure that uh, people aren't just, you know, flung out into the, into the vacuum of space. Either way, though, don't just assume by sawing a, a wing off a ship that that wing is going to just become idle. No, it will keep fighting for as long as it can. And that is that is definitely uh, a mistake waiting to happen for someone assuming that it won't. Ooh, now this. This is the Electro Bolt. This doesn't do lo a lot of damage, but it can shut systems down. Because when it hits, it drains energy rather than just doing damage. It, it does a little bit of damage still, but uh, we want to take care of that as soon as we can. Because if that hits us, it's going to be uh, draining the power cells out of our lasers. But as you can imagine, something that doesn't use lasers, like a, a missile system or a uh, cannon system, wouldn't care. Wouldn't care at all. It is still effective against thrusters, though. And it's especially effective against shields because it only has to hit the shield, the projected shield barrier. It doesn't need to hit the shield component to drain it of power. And shields are incredibly power hungry. Once they start running out of power, everything breaks. And let's uh, try and dig through here. We'll probably get an opportunity to repair ourselves in a moment as well. There we go. A uh, little bit more of an expensive repair, this one. Um, quite a few of our systems quite badly damaged there, but there we go. That's fine. We're, and we're actually getting a reasonable amount of money so far. I'm actually uh, quite quite happy with that. We've just killed a bunch of crew. Well, actually, no. Um, the crew will walk on the gantries. They can't just float between parts of the ship. So I, I strongly suspect this person is just stuck there. Um, yeah, it looks like they are very much stuck there. It's like, oh, what a, what a horrible way to go. I assume that although we can see their, their hair and their eyes, that they, that is actually some sort of space helmet. Or, or maybe not. Maybe that isn't being simulated yet. But uh, you can't really kill the crew specifically at, at the time being, unless you just explode something exploding next to them, such as a missile or a reactor, case in point. There we go. Uh, and then, yes, there they are, dead, just drifting in space. Okay, so we've got plenty of credits. Let's have a look at where we're next going to be going to. Uh, we could go over here. It's going to be a little bit more of a tougher fight, but there'll be two of them. And... Or, alternatively, we could go over here where we've got uh, two easier fights, but we'd be very far away from anything else. I'm a little bit hesitant to do that. What I might do is we'll hit these ones, move on to the three, the three strikes, 
and then come back here, clean these up, and then jump over here, clean those two up. Maybe. We are not a powerful ship, not yet. Let's go in and have a little bit of a build around though, see if we can't improve that somewhat. First and foremost, let's uh, move these up a little bit. It's always good to have them as far away from the center of mass as possible. It gives them the best possible uh, reaction. I should have turned on the mirror mode, but uh, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a love-hate relationship with mirror mode. I love it, but I always forget to use it properly. Uh, right, I would kind of prefer not to have that there because uh, it looks like it would be uh, melting in the exhaust from that thruster. However, that's probably one of the better places to put it. Alternatively, we could have just have one shield right at the front. That's actually not a bad idea. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to move my guns down there. Are, are they gonna work there, really? Hmm, that's a little bit impressive. Or surprising, I should say. But yes, let's uh, move the guns down. In fact, move them out a little bit. There we go. Uh, we'll delete this there. There we go. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and we'll place in a little bit more armor. But at the top, we are going to build a shield. Now, this is going to want a lot of power. Like, we're really bad off on power now because of that shield, which is a big shame. Hmm, how could we fix this? Uh... We could expand down here, maybe drop in one or two more um, reactors. That is always an option. We've got a lot of money right now to play with. So, sure, why don't we do that? We'll move everything down a little bit. So, something like that. Uh, we'll have our side thrusters there as well. It'll all be fine. Um, let's go with these instead. I think it looks a little bit better. There we go. And now we've got a lot of space to play with around here. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to move our reactor down to about, yeah, we could put it there. That wouldn't be a problem. And then we're going to get a second one. Now, they are expensive. They are 15k by themselves. But that is giving us an enormous amount of power now. And what we could do just to make things a little bit easier on us, we could add in a new uh, power storage as well. But I'm gonna move the doors around just a little bit. Um, that's fine, over there. Yeah, that, that all seems quite fine. Over on this side, we could add a little bit more armor if I'd like to, uh, and I'm tempted to. I'm also quite tempted to have a, an extra uh, berth there. That'll help out. Though now it's a, it's quite a, a journey to get anything up to the energy cells over there, which is which is a bit of a pain. But um, we'll, I'm fairly certain we can we can make this work. I would like to turn this around at this point. There we go. So uh, that all is starting to uh, make a little bit more sense to me. Uh, in fact, we could go ahead and bring this all the way down and just have doors on either side. There we are. That's actually quite nice. We could have a little bit of room at the front, in fact, because the shield currently is projecting its shield quite far forward. And I think I would probably like it if it was a little bit closer. So something like this would do. There we are. Now, it's not going to protect these guns, unfortunately. They're a little bit too far out. I mean, it'll protect them a little bit, but generally speaking, it's not going to be the, the best solution. I would like a second fire extinguisher because fires are horribly dangerous in this. Uh, never underestimate the effect of a fire. Uh, let's go ahead and place these down and then just kind of round off this little area. Now, that isn't just for the sake of looks. I mean, it is a little bit, but this really will affect the survivability. By having the armor around here so that you, you can only attack this thruster from a very specific direction, I am greatly increasing the longevity of that uh, component because the armor will absorb an awful lot of damage before it goes down. Uh, finally, is there anything else we want to add? No, I, th I think we've actually done a good job. We've moved the weapons around. We haven't actually increased the firepower though. Uh, given that, perhaps I should. Right now, we've got a quite a, a decent bit of forward thrust, not nearly as much um, braking thrust, but it isn't as um, necessary, I would say. So let's go ahead and move some things around a little bit, shall we? 
Um, yeah, let's let's do that. Let's move all of those across. Now, what we're about to do is going to dramatically reduce the uh, the protection offered to the, the the weapons I'm about to install compared to the shield that is. But it will give us a, a good little bit of uh, good little bit of kick when it comes to to fighting. So I'm happy to have that updated there. Okay, so we've we've increased our firepower by about half. And that's fine. Um, is there a better way to make this? I, I'm thinking that this just doesn't look right. Let's pop that there. This one over there. And then we will have double armor on that side. That actually looks a lot better to me. That looks a lot better. Okay. Right. Let's uh, commit this. It's going to cost us 53k to make these changes and hire the extra crew. But that's fine. Uh, let's make sure that the paint job is up to date because it will change. So we want to uh, draw that out on that side. Uh, make sure that this is uh, smooth just in case we continue to expand it out. There we go. And finally, drop that in as well. Glorious. Now it's taking a little bit of time for them to uh, get everything running again. But we've got uh, quite a lot of power coming through now. Uh, if we speed it up just a little bit. There we go. Our shield is online. Now, as you can see, that takes a lot of power cells. And it runs down fairly quickly. As it takes damage, it will get weaker and weaker and weaker. And it will consume these power cells faster. And then, you know, you get to a point where you need to wait for it to, to come back online again. But um, generally speaking, it will come online reasonably quickly. As long as you've got plenty of power moving through your systems. So with that, let's go ahead and jump over here. It's going to take 37 of our jump fuel. That's a little bit over half, but uh, that should be fine. And uh, hopefully we're going to have plenty of firepower for the ships that we're going to encounter there. They're going to be a little bit rough. I'm going to be honest with you. But hopefully this won't be too terribly bad. Okay, let's uh, start down here and work our way up. There we go. Our shield is now online. Let's uh, speed things up just to get you down there. And right, let's find out about you. What was it? Jet Sam. Very well. You have got main cannons. Okay. And your reactor is actually quite far to the side. You know what? You have not got the sort of turning capability that I have. So let me try and get to the side of you. Somewhere around there, I'm going to say. Uh, I don't want to have to play with this cannon, for obvious reasons. That's a very powerful gun. That's the uh, second tier um, projectile weapon. And it was able to engage me from a very great distance. Our shield only protects in that arc. On it will only ever protect us in that arc. What we can do to try and uh, correct that is every now and then we can just turn around the direction we're facing. Okay, okay. You know, that's fine. If you want to fight us on that side, I'm okay with that. Slow down. We don't need to be moving. There we are. Keep the shield at the front. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. Well done. Not that you were trying to. Ouch. Uh, okay. Well, we've, we're have we going to have to just dig our way through this, unfortunately. We've got quite a lot of uh, lasers, so it shouldn't be too hard for us to do. But that thing hits very hard. Our shield is taking a, quite a beating there. And it's gone. There we are. Okay. We can uh, try and... You know what, actually? I would kind of like to uh, let's slow down. Oh, we've actually taken out the the turning thrusters. Very well. No more. No more need to worry about the guns. Just aim for the reactor, and we can finish this fight early. There we go. That actually worked out quite well for us. The added firepower is is doing very very well. How are our energy stores? Yeah, we are depleting them. We're depleting them quite quickly. But overall, I would say it's going all right. Um, that cannon is more or less doing nothing at this point we may have even disconnected it from the uh, there's the factory but we may have disconnected storage we'll see but there we go and target defeated 15k not terrible let's go ahead and deal with you if we can speed time up and then slow it down once we're in range this is more or less how i would play gratuitous space battles um Oh, always thought I always really enjoy just watching the battles just kind of uh, unfold. Now, you've got two reactors and a fair number of guns. Omnidirectional, really. Uh, let's try and take out your thrusters on one side so that we can hamper your ability to move around. 
that would be very useful. Following that, uh, we might actually just want to go for your um, reactors after that. But our shield is going to go down fairly soon. It is already down. That is a shame. Okay, let's try and wipe those out. Now, point defense will never attack a ship. They, they're completely ineffective against ships. Uh, the shield system might actually go down. Yes, they've taken it down completely. That is terrifying. Uh, let's see if we can't just wipe out this weapon system quickly. Because those things will be just jamming my weapons straight away. Okay, two of their weapon systems are down. And my control... My uh, control room is being jammed. Well, that is super bad. And I cannot do anything about it. Oh, no. Oh, no, super bad times. Please come closer. Come close. There we go. Control room's back online. Get to shooting. Or possibly escaping. Escaping would also be valid. Uh, actually, we might be in a position where... Oh, no, he's done it again. Scallywags. I saw it coming as well. Quickly get some power into the control room, please. Now, there we go. Control room is back online, though it's barely, barely even there at this point. And it's gone again. Damn you! And my control room is proper gone. Well, poop. Poop, poop, poop. We are in bad times. Super bad times. Maybe I should have just put armor there uh, instead of a corridor. Uh, can I get you to move at all? No, not without a control room. And this is the, the range of our, our vision without a control room. Uh, so there's a little part of me that's like, yeah, maybe I should have added a, added a secondary control room in there. Might have been worth it. But on the plus side, this is going to allow you to see the way that uh, damage propagates the ship. So we've got a couple of fires. People are making their way down to the, um, the fire extinguishers quickly. We might have wanted to just back out as soon as we uh, lost the shield, honestly. But come on, quickly. Use the fire extinguisher as soon as you can. Very slow to move over the gantries. There we go. Putting out that fire. Well done. Not that it's going to super help you, but, you know, it, it's good. This is going to be used, used. This is a training video. Many lives will be saved in the future thanks to your heroic efforts. Well done, crew. I approve of the way that you're going to die. Though you are kind of stuck in those rooms. That sucks. There's nothing for you to do. Run out of power. Terrible. Sensors, you can also build a sensor suite, though, that will uh, allow you to have a much larger vision range. Maybe if we had that, even with the control room going down, we would have been able to do something with it. But unfortunately, that, uh, that fighter was just a little bit too powerful for us. But with that, we're more or less dead. So... A interesting first episode, not quite the, the point that I wanted to leave you at, but hopefully this has given you an idea about the game, and uh, do let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing more, but that's going to be it from me for now. Do remember that Cosmeteer is available for free from the website at the moment. Again, links will be in the video description down below, and until next time, take care, and try not to let your control room get smashed. <laughs>